My name is Paul Corder. I'm with Perfect Golf Event. Today we're going to talk about a variety of subjects, kind of focused on those of you who have still have events planned for this this year for 2020. Because there are a number of those people that we know are still having events, um, and also those who had to cancel their event or modify their event and want to get ready for 2021. So we're going to cover a number of subjects. Um, uh, a little housekeeping: uh, if you have uh, you can take notes, but I'll be glad afterwards to send you a copy of the presentation. We're also recording it and we'll post it on Monday on our website. Um, but you can get a copy of the presentation. Just email me afterwards and I'll send you the, the full deck so you'll have it. Today we're going to cover a quick overview of the situation. We're going to talk about live events and how they still work. We'll talk about the movement towards sort of live vir virtual event combinations, um, some virtual event options virtual pro shops, uh, how technology can help you through this, what are you going through these challenges. Uh, we'll talk about our new online auction package, uh, raffle package, and a very neat new uh, application called Golf Surprise, uh, which is exclusive to Perfect Golf Event, which I think you're going to find uh, very interesting. So again, for those of you who are just joining us, because I know there's some late sign-ons, um, I'll be glad to make sure I'll send you the notes afterwards so you can just listen and then send me a quick email and I'll be glad to send you the full deck and we're also recording. Let's talk right now. We're going to talk about what I call three key fundraising periods. The first one is what we're going through now. Those of you having events, you know, usually the event season can go September, October, November, up until before Thanksgiving, then it sort of goes away. So there's things you can still be doing during this period of time to raise money. Uh, there's a next period, which would be the December, February period, where it's tough to really hold live events unless you're in Florida um, or warm weather states, but you can still be doing things to raise money. Um, certainly auctions and raffles uh, can be held during this time to raise money. They don't have to be tied to a golf event. <clears throat> there's good timing for auctions and, and raffles because uh, people may need things for business gifts and Christmas gifts, holiday gifts, whatever. Um, so you can do those to help fundraise. Uh, but a really important point I want to make, and I'm going to emphasize it in a couple of slides later, is if you're, having, if you're planning your 2021 golf event, it's really important now to get it started early. And I'm going to give you the reasons in a bit. But if you skip this year or modify this year and you think you're going in next year, I'm going to tell you why you need to get it launched as fast as you can, getting ready for 2021. And then the next period, obviously, as we go into next year, you're going to have to decide kind of your live event options, or are you going to do a virtual event or a combination, and what are the things you can add to raise additional money, since that's going to be the goal for everybody, is how they're going to achieve our financial goals uh, for the balance of 2020, but also in 2021. You know, um, there's a lot of challenges facing organizers now. Safety, obviously, is number one. Um, also, the format that you can hang, ha have with these uh, challenging circumstances attracting players and selling sponsorships are even more challenges that some businesses have closed down or are on hiatus. Um, types of on, add-on contests and activities you can add to raise money. And the overall thing is, how am I going to achieve my financial goals, you know, sort of in the environment that we're in now? We believe that the golf events are still very effective fundraisers. Um, you can re and I like it because you can reconnect with supporters in a safe and, and social environment. Um, we've seen a huge increase in the number of events being set up for the fall. We thought would be quiet the rest of the year, but it seems like golf has really picked up as a fundraiser uh, in the in the athletic community. I mean, you can't really have a 5K run or some of those, but you can get on a golf course and spread out. It allows you to communicate your mission to your supporters, your volunteers, and what I like about golf events is. It introduces new people to your organization. Basically, 75% of all the people who come to a golf event are guests. They may not know anything about what you're doing, and you get a chance to say to them, here's, here's how we raise money and why we're raising money. They may become involved. Um, you know, you can do event day contests and online activities to raise more money. And what we find is if you have an annual event, um, it's, it can continue and so forth. We, we work with a lot of events. I actually work with an event at Cornell University. That's the longest one that I know, but this will be the 64th year for their fundraising golf event. So if you can get past the first year, we find that you could be successful even if you have a modified event. So getting an event, having the first year successful, it can become a, a, a good part of your mix for fundraising uh, going forward.
Now, you know, let's talk for a bit about um, why you want to have your 2020 event. If you've uh, if you've not had an event in 2020 or it's already over, you canceled. Why you want to launch for 2021 soon? The, there's a number of reasons, but the most important is that sponsors plan their budgets in the fourth quarter. So the worst words you can hear is when you talk to somebody next year about your golf event is, hey, you know, we're looking for you to help sponsor our golf event. And they say, oh, I wish you had told me about it before. We've already put our budget together and, you know, maybe next year. So you want to get in front of them this year. Some of the sponsors, they may have limited funds available. They may say we're going to only support so many events next year. And you want to make sure you're at the front of that line. Same with players. Players who maybe play in four or five charity golf events may say, I can only really do two or three next year. And you want to make sure they know about your event and get it on the schedule. So you want to launch your site. Hopefully you're using Perfect Golf Event to get up and set your site up. Send out your send the date marketing email. You can use our system to do that. So people will get it on their calendar and into their budgets. And if you had an event with us this year, just remember, all you have to do is send a note to support a perfect golf event, and they'll copy your 2020 event over quickly and get you set up for 2021 so you can launch your event. I, I manage a number of events myself, and all my 2021, uh, 2021 event sites are up already because we just want to get ahead of the curve. Now, live events still, I think, are still the the, the, the best option if you can have one, depending on your community environment. Um, and, you know, golf, as I said before, golf is quickly becoming the most effective fundraising event involving sports and athletics. Um, it gets a group event, it provides a way to communicate your mission, can increase the amount you raise, add more supporters. It allows you to recognize the sponsors properly. And, and even if you had a modified event in 2020, plan to come back strong in 2021 and let people know, hey, I know we had to do maybe tea times this year. Or we had to reduce the, uh, the time on the course, but we're coming back next year. Get us on your calendar. So um, golf is a great way to do it. A live event is still the best way to do that, I believe. What I also tell people is you're planning as you get together with your committees and things is to review what you have as your excitement plan for attracting players. People are going to want to play in fun events next year. We always advocate that the, you know, the four person scramble is kind of a dying format. You need more interesting stuff. Here's an example of an event that I have coming up on September 25th. And you can see when I put out the event day highlights, people can look at this and go, wow, this is really a lot of good stuff happening at this event. I want to be there. So you can, when you get this copy, you can review this, your committee and just say, Hey, what are we doing pre-event? What are we doing uh, on course? What are we doing post golf? So you can compare your event to this event, which has probably been sold out for six years and raises about $170,000. And you wanna say, what are we doing in those time frames? You may also wanna be open to new formats to, to attract players and sponsors. You wanna be different. This is an event, it's been sold out for seven years. The eighth year is already sold out in February of, the, of 2021. But what we wanted to do with this event is not have a four person scramble. So we did a 18 par three holes. We had a $10,000 hole in one contest on all 18 holes. We played six person teams because we were done in three and a half hours and people had a chance to better network. We had a shootout for 18 players at the end for a million dollars. We gave $10,000 prize for the person who was closest to the pin. Sorry about the typo, I'll fix that. Uh, and during the shootout, um, and it's just a great format. And you can do this format <clears throat> with a modified budget. I just had one who just finished the event and they did a thousand dollar cash price because they, their budget was limited. Um, but it's a little, it's a different kind of event. Um, and that's the way you want to do it. So if you're thinking about launching for 2021 and you, and you want some ideas on different formats that will attract players and sponsors, just contact our team at support at perfect golf event. And we can do anything. We can fit anything to fit your budget. Um, and make your event interesting. Here's one that was supposed to be held in May of 2020. It's gotten moved to 2021, but they did kind of a modified format. They had nine par three holes, nine regulation holes. Um, just an interesting way to introduce a new event into a market where there's maybe a lot of events that you're competing with. Also, if you're doing your events, just remember that you want to add some interesting contests to it. And so hole-in-one contests are really important for your golf event. Players want to come out and, and say, hey, I got a chance to win things during the event. This is a list, even though there are some events canceled this year, this is a list of some of the 
hole-in-one contest that we did this year. And even though somebody had a hole-in-one for the Napa Valley Wine Tour, they can't take it in 2020 or even 2021. It doesn't matter. They can take it any time in the future. And so think about something that's just different. I, I don't really like cars for um, hole-in-one contests because usually it's a lease. And it's, you know you got to do a credit check and get rid of an existing car, but you can come up with some creative ideas like the new one we just released, which is our bucket list, um, and that lets the person pick from a whole bunch of experiences that they may want to go. They may want to go to an adult hockey camp or to a women's golf camp. So this is called our bucket list, and it lets the winner pick their prize. So just think about things you're going to add to your contest. I mean to your event to make it interesting. Now. Let's go through some of the live and virtual event combinations that are people are doing right now. And again, you may still have time to do an event this year. And if not, then this is something to think about for next year, depending again on the uh, where you are and how open they are in terms of uh, you know having full golf events. So I'm going to walk through these. And again, for those of you who signed on late, I'll be glad to send you the uh, this list. So I'm going to walk through the each, and I can read these because I've got to go through all of them in a second. But there's, you know, right here, six different options for having a golf event without just having the normal 140 player uh, scramble. So some people are saying, look, I want to do a scramble, but I want to spread it out a little bit. Um, so they're doing an AM and PM start time. So instead of having 144 people jammed together one time, they're just playing 72 players in the morning, 72 in the afternoon saves on the golf cart costs, they can social distance, and then they're inviting people back to come back. And a lot of golf courses have outdoor space where you can spread out, have a couple stations set up with beer and wine or a bar, and you can have your awards, you can still have your auction, you can have your raffles, and you're just spreading out a little bit. So split tee times, um, we have a lot of events have moved to this just to make people feel safe. Other events are doing what's called split set tee times with a virtual award ceremony. So in this case, what they're doing is they're setting the tee times and they're blocking the course for the whole day. And they're saying to everybody, look, we're going to have the events at this golf course. We're going to assign you tee times. You're going to be spread out during the day. Uh, and then at the end of the bit, we're going to have an award ceremony on Zoom. We're going to recognize our sponsors. We're going to announce the winners and, and we'll have photos from the event. Um, and, and again, people, have, this is a, 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 a format that's been used this year. Uh, and again, it's a nice way to fit it in when you're when you're dealing with the COVID virus challenges. So the, again, this way they're just signing tee times. The teams submit their scorecards to the, at the end. You can still have hold in one contest. You can still have sponsor sponsor signs on the golf course, um, and you can use our perfect golf event to do the tee time registration. So people can pick a tee time, then you'll have it on the reports and you can assign tee times to everybody. Some people are doing set tee time, same format as the one I just mentioned, um, but they're inviting everybody to come back at the, um, uh, at the end of the day. And then they're doing a socially distanced kind of reception and having a shootout, um, which gives them the opportunity to hold a raffle silent auction, those them still raise some money from those options. When they're doing this, the golfer plays throughout the day. Golfers come uh, the closest to the pin on the par three holes, qualify for the shootout. You text them to say, come on back, you're in the shootout. Invite everybody back. You can have the shootout on a hole near the clubhouse. You can have your raffle. Again, it's another option for the user, those of you who can't um, really do a full 144 player, 120 player uh, scramble. Another option is what's called a date range fundraising golf event. In this case, golfers, you know, play for your nonprofit during a, a date range. You may set it up with an individual course. And I'll go through that in a second. They can play as an individual or as a team. They post their scores and then you say, okay, we're going to announce results um, at the end of a period of time. So here's an example of an event that did this this year. Uh, they played, this was right in the middle of the virus, so it was a tough time, but they said, listen, go play this golf course between July 15th and August 15th. You're playing on the, you know, for the benefit of this charity, and then just turn in your scores, and we'll have all the awards and things announced after August 15th. So, again, establish a date range for your event, select a golf course, have a special rate. Um, you know, what I've done with some of these events is said to the golf course, look, here's your normal rate. We're going to add something on for the charity, but we're going to include some contests and maybe a box lunch. Um, or they, or you can let them go play any golf course they want and, and report their scores with their slope. 
Um, and then they could register for it on the Perfect Golf event website. And then they, they'll send in the, uh, uh, they can take a photo of the scorecard afterwards or email you the results. And then you can post everything. So this is one from an event where the organizer just said, hey, play your round for our charity. And then just take a picture of your scorecard, send it in. And then we're going to post these scores on Perfect Golf event. They had an award ceremony on Zoom. And it kept, kept people involved. What I try and tell people is, let's try not to cancel our events this year. Even if you're having a modified event, to cancel an event and come back next year is a challenge. It, it breaks the continuity. So whatever you can do to have it, if you've already missed that opportunity, at least launch your 2021 event right away so people know that, hey, we're live and kicking and we're going to be around in 2021. Some people have done a thing where they've just said, we're going to raise some money. They select a golf course. They tell them, go out on this golf course on, you know, Saturday, whatever day, September 25th, and play. And uh, you're going to be playing for our nonprofit. We're going to have a $10,000 hole-in-one contest set up for our, our group. They can play with their friends, and they can register on a perfect golf event. And they just you go work with the golf course to say, I'm going to send a bunch of players to you during this period of time. You know, give us a special rate. Um, we're going to mark it up a little bit for our to make some raise some money, and then people will say we can even charge them to get into the ten thousand dollar hole in one contest. And I'm not going to read all this to you because I'm going to send it to you. But anyway, the best thing is to negotiate that special rate at a golf course and tell people go out and play it. You know, this date, um, you know, Saturday, uh, September twenty seventh, whatever the Saturday is, is the day for our charity. So just go play. You know, Gateway Golf Course. They're going to know who you are. You're playing for our charity. And we've got some contests set up during the day. Um, it's going to be a fun day and helps us raise some money. Now, you're not going to raise what you normally would raise at a, a golf event, but it keeps you in the game. And the final option is, if you consider it, is the Top Golf. If you have a Top Golf uh, location near you, there's about 60 Top Golf locations, I think, in the country now. Um, they're set up well for social distancing. If, you, if you've ever been to a Top Golf, they've got the the bay set up with distance between them. Um, I'm doing a, a couple of big events in October, November. It's Top Golf here in St. Louis. Um, we have a special rate for nonprofits, so people are going to come out and play. It includes three hours of play, a dinner, which is going to be box lunches or box dinner because we're not going to have buffets, and a tournament. And they can set up. Here's the one I've got going October 18th for the backstoppers. Um, it's an easy promotion. Registration can be done with the Perfect Golf event website. People come out and play Top Golf. Again, the nice thing about Top Golf is you could have the Top Golf event in December if you want, or January. Even if you're in cold weather states, they've got heated bays, and again, it keeps you in the game. So these are some of the different options to consider with your committee, either if you're still planning to have an event this year, or if you're thinking next year that you want to get in, but you're a little nervous about the format for getting in. Um, and again, I'll be glad to send you a copy of this presentation with all these notes on them so you'll have them for your committee. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of vir I'm going to virtual options and some virtual pro shops. Um, this is an app, um, and it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, and basically, it's, it's a virtual golf event app, and here's how it works. Um, golfers pay a fee to get in the contest, and you, est you establish what the fee is. They go into the app, and they will pick three PGA Tour pros um, from any tournament that's being happened. It could be happening for one coming up this week or at the same time you're having your event. So you can do this as a standalone or tied to your event. Um, but anyway, the players go in, they pick three pros from a list, and they go out and play and they post their score. And their score gets combined with the scores of the pros. And the pro scores are based on the FedEx Cup points that are earned that week by the players they pick. And so um, basically the golfer is paired with three pros, uh, and then the points are decided based on their scores and their pro scores. It's kind of a fun thing to do. It's very easy to do. Um, you know, they they will play a, a fee that you establish, um, and then they can go set up the on the app. So let me, okay. So golfers register for the contest online using the Perfect Golf website. They get a code to enter the tournament. They download the app, enter the code, and they can go in and start picking their players for the tournament. There's a live leaderboard that's updated. So during the event, the pro event, they can see how they're standing against everybody else in the group. They can have fun naming their team, selecting their team, communicating with the other people in the groups to say, hey, my team's beating your team. Your pro didn't even make the cut. So there's a little bit of chatter that goes on. 
and you can when they enter their score, and then prizes again are awarded uh, based on the points earned. It's a nice, simple app, but it's a fun way to have a virtual golf event. And you could tie it into other things, like you could tie it into when we talk about our online auction in a bit or the raffles. It's also a great sponsorship opportunity because people, when they go to view the tournament and view the leaderboard, then they can see um, the name of the event. They can have a logo posted here. You can post messages recognizing your sponsors, talking about your charity. And so it gives you a chance in a virtual world to communicate. And I'd say what's interesting is probably the number one search in golf right now on Google is virtual golf events. And people really don't know what that means. Um, so it is a combination of what we talked about earlier with a combination of a live and a virtual event. Um, but also you can do a pure virtual event like this. And it's only 250 to run the contest. You can charge an entry fee to cover the prizes and raise funds for your organization. And on any of these things I'm talking about, you can send an email to either shop at Perfect Golf Event or support at Perfect Golf Event and they'll get you started. Before I get into the auction and the raffles and some of the other things, um, just remember that, that if you the technology is important right now, especially because of the social distancing. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from people. And if you read our reviews on Trust Reviews or Trust Pilot, they say it really worked well because we could run all the reports. People could register online. I didn't have to have a bunch of people lined up at the tables. You know, you've seen that when you show up at a golf event, people are all lined up and, and not really social distancing. So. You know, make sure you set up your perfect golf event website. You know, it's going to allow you to do your player pairings and put, recognize sponsors. People can register. They can pay online. It allows them to edit their team at any time. I love that feature because we all know that people say they're going to play with somebody when they sign up, and that changes. They can go back in and change their team anytime. It's got a donation feature. Um, and you, you want to promote online registration for your event. Uh, because it's going to encourage everybody to register ahead of time to eliminate that registration jam. And also you can add raffle tickets, super ticket, mulligans, anything, shirt sizes, anything you want can be gathered at registration. And that's easy to track and it's on the reports. So you'll have everything that you need. As I said, teams can be easily updated online. So what's interesting is that events in 2019, with the latest statistics we have, that events with online registration increase their funds by 22%. Not only because people bought and registered online, they knew they were going to be secure. They're not, you know, who wants a printed form with my credit card information being flown around somewhere? Um, and they also add more things to the cart and they get their tax receipt. So that there's real advantages to online registration. And as you can see from this event in Pennsylvania, you know, they're they're having people sign up for their event, you know, so they can buy a foursome or individual golfer. But at the same time, they could buy their raffle tickets, they could buy their super ticket, they buy their mulligans. So why they got their credit, why they have their credit card out, they can make all those decisions, put it all in their one shopping cart, and you get all the money right away. And so you're not chasing money around at some point. So you can set your website up. You can run a free website on Perfect Golf Event. There's some upgrade options, but a lot of people just use the free site for the online registration and payment processing. <coughs> Another option you want to consider is if you're having a virtual event or a spread out event, it's hard to do. Um, think about a virtual pro shop. We have two of them. You let the players pick their gifts safely. So on a virtual pro shop, and it could be sponsored, it could be, you can see this is for specific for this particular event. So each pro shop is set up for your event. And they could pick from any category, apparel, sports, golf, tech, lifestyle products. And the person gets vouchers. So you could say, hey, if you're playing our golf event, each of you is going to get a $25 or a $50, whatever the pro normal price you pay for a player gift voucher to go in there and shop for what you want. I'm not going to make you take a shirt that you don't need. It's going to be on my on the website. It's got our website there. You can put the sponsor logo on the pro shop and say, hey, all the player gifts are sponsored by so-and-so airlines or whatever it is. And it's a great way for people to buy. You can also use it for prizes. So you can say the winning team, hey, your team was winners or your team, or you were closest to the pin. Here's a voucher to go get your prize. Nice thing. If you have a little higher end event, the other virtual pro shop we work with is Signature Golfware. And this is where players can find a lot of special things from great brands, Bobby Jones, all the top brands are in here. And it's got a great selection for men and women. They can go in for stuff from golf or tennis, 
select whatever they want. It's a great thing for, again, for a player gifts, team awards, individual prizes. Um, it's set up for value. You can see all the brand names are in there. What's nice is you just give them the voucher, they shop, then the signature golfware will ship them directly to the winners. So you don't have to touch anything and people still get the recognition. You can, again, upload sponsor logos so sponsors can be recognized. Uh, it's just a nice thing to think about as opposed to having a line set up with a bunch of prizes that maybe people really don't want. Let them pick their own their own prize. Now, this is very exciting. I've been with uh, Perfect Golf Event for six years, and this is probably the most requested thing that we've had is adding an auction to the Perfect Golf Event website. So we've put our online website together, our auction site together, uh, and it can be used either in conjunction with a golf event or, as I mentioned before, if you just want to have a standalone auction, then you can do that. The features are great. You can upload your own items. You can select items that we have there that you can use at no risk. It means you don't pay for them unless somebody wins the bid and you make money on that. Bids can be placed online. Progress is tracked real time on each item so you can see how the bidding is going. Um, you can set the bid amounts. You can upload photos, descriptions, create custom categories, display featured items. And the winners, the nice part is winners can pay right online after they win the auction. So it makes all the paperwork for you extremely easy. Nice part of it is you can add all the things you want from your local. So what you normally have for a silent auction, so maybe you're not having a silent auction, or you can do both. Um, but you can upload the things that you have donated lo locally, wine baskets and tickets and golf certificates and autographed footballs, whatever it is. You can put them up there in the site. And people can bid on those. And then you can also pick things to make your auction more robust. You can pick things from our categories. So we've got like 25 different framed items and memorabilia from the golf industry. So whether it's uh, Ben Hogan and Arnold Palmer smoking a cigarette or Jack paying off a bet to Arnie, they're collector's things that we know they're most popular from our regular auctions. Um, so about 25 golf items. You've got a whole bunch of entertainment items to pick from, Game of Thrones or Jack Nicholson smoking a cigar. I actually have that in my living room because I love it and I smoke cigars. Um, or the boss and Clemens here. So you can put all those things in. You can pick them, add them to your auction, and you don't pay for them unless the, somebody bids on it, wins it, and there's a profit built in for your organization. You can also add some other things from sports or, or from movies or whatever. So it's a complete selection. If you're going to do it, if you like to do it, it's a good time. Uh, I said you don't even have to have a golf event. You can um, – you know, you can have uh, for 997 bucks. you can do our basic one that allows you to upload items um, or you can get the larger one for 297 and that allows you to add up, up to 100 items, three separate auctions, your own domain name, sponsor logos, use your own payment processing. Um, and the, the nice thing about it is a lot of the auction sites will take a piece of your revenue. We don't. You're just going to pay a flat 297 There's credit card fees but there's no taking of any kind of revenue from what you've earned. And that's a model we didn't like from normal, some of the normal auction packages. So you can order your first auction package by November, uh, by November 30th, and we'll, we'll give you the 297 package so we can get the auction package to, you know, released out there early. So if you're interested, again, just email support at Perfect Golf Event. The other thing you can do is you can take a lot of the items we offer and you can put those into raffle packages. So you can bundle some of the donated items in a raffle package, add things from our authentic selection, um, and then you can send, sell raffle entries on your perfect golf event website. So you can go on there and you can say, hey, bid on our auction, you know, go in. There's items you can bid on for the auction, but also we're having a raffle. So buy your raffle tickets. We're going to be picking items uh, and, and we'll uh, announce all those winners. Um, and maybe I know a number of people are doing their auction drawing right on Zoom so people can watch it so they know it's legitimate. Um, or they're just posting them on the website saying, here's the winners of the of the raffle. So, again, these are no other options right now where everybody's kind of struggling to find out where they can get additional funds. So all the things I'm presenting, I know you couldn't do them all, but you may find things that kind of fit what you're trying to do as an organization. And any of our team can help you with that. We have a great team of golf event coaches that will walk you through formats and options and online auctions and raffles and anything we can do to help you make additional funds. Now, this one's new. 
It's exclusive to per Perfect Golf Event. We're just releasing this on October 1st. It's a brand new fundraising online contest. I love it. It's phenomenal. It's called Golf Surprise. And in Golf Surprise, it's basically an online raffle and survey tool. And I'll explain that to you in a minute, and you'll see why it's valuable to it. But basically what you do, it's launching in October. Um, players sign up online or at your, uh, or at your event. So the people are going to do is they're going to pay a, an entry fee. Uh, enter the contest. They're going to pay an entry fee. You decide on the fee, anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks. It's like going into an online raffle. They don't have to download an app. I love this feature. All they have to do is give you their cell phone number because they're going to notify what's happening through their cell phone. Nobody, a lot of people don't want to put any more apps on their phone, so it's no app. It's just all you need is a cell phone number. You enter the cell phone number into the Golf Surprise account that we're going to set up for you. You decide on how the value of those are going to be decided. So if you collect, for example, you know, let's say if 100 golfers pay 50 bucks to get into it, you've got $5,000. You might say, you know, we're going to pay out um, $3,500 in cash prizes and we're going to keep some of the money for our organization, but there's a good chance you can win cash prizes or other prizes. I'll show you those in a second. You decide when the raffle's over. If it's a golf event, you end the raffle right as the teams are finishing golf. If it's an online event, you could say the raffle is going to be over at this time, whatever time you want. And that point, all the notifications go out to the mobile numbers you enter. Say, hey, the raffle has just ended. Click here to see if you won a prize. And it's going to go on a message to their cell phone. You can buy this contest, same as the other one, for $250 from us. No other surprise costs or anything like that. But nice feature about it is the players answer custom questions to see if they've won the prize. So let's say you're at a live event, the golfers come in, you say, what was your score? What, which hole did you make a great putt? Rate the, rate the event. How well do you know about our, our nonprofit? How lightly are you to support our sponsors? It gives you data you can use as you're promoting your next event. For a virtual event, say they go play a golf event, some go golf course somewhere, put in your score. How much do you know about our nonprofit? How much do you know about the sponsors for this app that we're doing? I mean, it's not an app uh, for the Golf Surprise Contest. Uh, how likely you're to play in our event next year? I love it because it gives us a chance to collect data quickly on the cell phone. After they answer the questions, it says, congratulations, you've won the prize. And the, and the money is distributed randomly through a patented process. So if you say $3,500 is going to all the people who entered, it's going to randomly pick people. Some people are going to win 25 bucks. Some people are going to win 50 bucks. The grand prize is usually $500. Um, and so people are just going to randomly notify uh, that they won. And if they didn't win, it's going to thank them for participating. But at least you've gathered information for them. And again, prizes you can set up could be cash, could be pro shop certificates, could be mobile pro shop certificates like we talked about, could be signature golf wear specific, uh, gift cards. Or maybe you give them money that can be used towards your online auction. That's a great way to keep the money in-house. Nice part about it, if you have a Perfect Golf Event website, they can enter the Golf Surprise Contest right online. So here the, the organizer is smart saying, hey, you can buy 10 raffle tickets for 80 bucks. You can also enter Golf Surprise, collecting money right there. And you can use, again, signature golfware vouchers as a prize. So people can say, you know, whatever you win, you can cash in it at uh, Signature Golfware, and then we'll handle, Signature Golfware will handle all the shipping for it. So it's a really new contest, brand new. It's patented. No one else has this contest. It's going to release in October. We think it's going to be wildly successful in the fall, but especially in 2021. So if you need more information on it, our team can help you with that. And another thing you can do is, again, like I showed before with that entry, you can combine it. So you can say, you know, enter in and you're going to get entry into Golf Surprise, but you're also going to get some raffle tickets. Combine them all together. The more creativity you can bring to the situation, the more you can engage people, the more the sponsors will be recognized, and the more money you're going to raise. So I know these are kind of challenging things to get on a straight webinar like this. So you probably want to talk to some of our team members about how to make this work for your event. And we love doing that. So. Look forward to hearing from me on that. And again, here it is where the golf surprise, well, the organizers put up, and so we, had, we did a couple of test events, golf surprise entry and 10 raffle tickets for 100 bucks, and then the person's into the raffle and into golf surprise where they can win cash prizes or other prizes. As I you know, mentioned before, our team stands ready to help you at anything. Just contact them. You can call them anytime. We, we pride ourselves on answering the phone. 
uh, and also we'll answer emails seven days a week. So whatever you need from us, just let us know. Um, if you want a copy of this presentation, you can send a note to support at Perfect Golf Event, or you can email me directly today at paul at Perfect Golf Event, uh, and I'll be glad to help you with anything I can help you with. So um, if there's any other questions, please let me know. Um, that uh, that uh, Just email me directly, and I'll be glad to help you. If you have specific questions, just send it to paul at Perfect Golf Event, and we'll go from there. Thanks very much for um, listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great finish to the year, and let's get ready for 2021.